بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ولي الأولين والآخرين وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد My respected brothers and sisters, my beloved elders and my beloved youngsters Before Allah Ta'ala we will be beginning a new series of lessons in this blessed masjid, Masjid Darul Salam in Manchester and these lessons are in going through a small concise book called Mi'atu Su'alin wa Jawabuhu Fi Aqidat Tawheed 100 questions and their answers regarding Aqeedah and At-Tawheed regarding Aqeedah and At-Tawheed and whoever wants a copy there are copies here available so please do take copies and next, next lesson I will bring some more copies insha'Allah my only request is that if you're taking a copy write down your name on the inside page and if you have a mobile number, write down your mobile number in case it gets lost. And then don't leave these books lying around in the masjid, but look, take care of the books. And if you want to take more than one copy, you're welcome to do so. In case you want to teach it to your children or read it to your family members, your friends, or you want to give it to somebody for da'wah, you're more than welcome to take another copy. And as I mentioned in the next lesson, I will bring some more copies for the masjid. And this book, 100 Questions and Answers Regarding Aqeed and Tawheed, it has been authored by our Shaykh, Shaykh Abdul Aziz ibn Muhammad al Sha'alan from Riyadh in Saudi Arabia. And then it was translated. And as you can see from the front cover, there is a forward or an introduction by a Shaykh al Alama, Shaykh Salih ibn Fawzan al Fawzan, Hafidhullah who is from the most senior scholars of Saudi Arabia today. And he is in Hayat Kabar al-Ulama, in the organization of the major scholars of Saudi Arabia. And as you know from, or as you can see from the title of the book, it will be regarding Aqeed and Tawheed, yani the hundred questions, all of them, they revolve around al aqidah and they revolve around at tawheed However, today's lesson, we're not going to read from the book, but it's going to be a general introduction regarding Aqeedah and At-Tawheed. And I appreciate that it's Monday evening and perhaps people have got work tomorrow. And so we'll try to keep these lessons relatively brief. And because they are every other week, we can inshallah still get a lot done within Allah Ta'ala. First of all, we need to understand what is Aqeedah, what is the meaning of al Aqeedah. We need to understand what is Tawheed, what is the meaning of Tawheed. And we need to understand what is the difference between Aqeedah and Tawheed. What is Aqeedah, what is Tawheed, and what is the difference between al Aqeedah and al Tawheed. So the word al Aqeedah. It's taken from the Arabic root word Ain, Qaf and Dal. The word al aqida is taken from these three root letters Ain, Qaf and Dal. Aqd or Aqada. And Aqada, Ain, Qaf and Dal, it's when a knot is tied. Ain Qaf Dal Aqada It's when a knot is tied And all of us, every single one of us here We have memorized the surah In which Allah Subhanahu says Wa min sharrin nafathati fil uqad and, and who knows the meaning of this ayah? Now put your hands up if you know the meanings of this ayah Anybody else apart from Yusuf, anybody else? Huh, from the young madrasa boys? Anybody? Tofiq, which uh, gifts do you have here? What did they say? 
Let's have a look. Okay, there's some uh, perfumes, mashallah. Whoever can answer questions, a perfume and a hat. Did you say miswak as well? No. Did you say a uh, uh, fifty-pound voucher? Ha, yalla. So, wamin sharrin nafathati fil uqad. From one of the younger boys, the madrasa boys. Um, <coughs> Naam, tafadhal. Naam, go ahead. Uh, and the evil in wamin sharrin nafathati fil uqad in, inside the knot. I don't know the nafathati. An nafath, huh? who knows an nafath? An nafath, tafadhal. To blow. Naam, to blow. An nafath means to blow. So you are saying, Oh Allah, I seek refuge and protection in you from the evil of those who blow on the knots. And who are those people? The uh, Sahara, the magicians. Now the magicians, when they want to bind Sihr, then they will make knots, drawing close to the shayateen, and then they blow on those knots. And this is one of the ways of a Sihr. And so a person says, Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from the evil of those who blow on the knots. The point is, here the word al-uqad, same as al-aqidah, same root word, it means something which is knotted. Also in the Arabic language, uh, a contract is called an aqd, a contract, what we write down. And why is a contract called aqd? Because it is binding upon you. Naam? Because it is binding upon you. Just like a knot binds the rope together and strengthens the rope, like this, al aqd meaning the contract, it binds you to certain conditions. And Allah subhanahu wa said in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, awfu bil uqud. O people of Iman, fulfill your contracts. Fulfill your contracts. So one of the traits of the mu'min is being truthful and fulfilling the contract. And one of the traits of the munafiqoon is tumina khan. That when he is given a trust or he makes a contract, then he breaks the contract. So what is the relevance between al-aqidah which we study and aqd which means a knot or something which is binding. The relevance is that your aqidah is what you have tied your heart to. Now your aqidah is that which you have tied your heart to. It's like it's a contract between you and between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And your heart is tied down like the knot is tied. Your heart is tied down to this aqidah. Of course, aqidah can be fasid or it can be salih. It can be a good aqidah or it could, could be a bad aqidah. So the Christians have an aqidah and the Yahud qabbahahumullah have aqidah and the mulhid, the atheists, has an aqidah even though the atheists try to say that they don't have a belief system, but atheism within, its, within itself, it is an aqidah. The Hindus have aqidah, the mushriks have aqidah, and also the people of Islam, the people of Tawheed have an aqidah. So the linguistic meaning, meaning the Arabic language, is something which you tie yourself down to, a contract or a knot in a rope. So al aqida ma yaqiduhu al qalb aqdan jaziman bil yaqeen aqida ma yaqidu alayhi al qalb aqdan jaziman aqida is that which you have bound your heart to aqdan jaziman and it is firm and this shows us that it's, it's not allowed for a person to be flexible in his aqida it's not allowed for a person to be hesitant in his aqidah. In fact, one of the conditions of la ilaha illallah and one of the conditions of your iman is al-yaqeen. Al-yaqeen means complete certainty. Without any shak, 
ولا تردد without any doubt or hesitation and in the Quran whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the aqeed of the people of Iman he negates doubt from it and when he describes the munafiqoon he mentions doubt Allah subhanahu wa said إنما المؤمنون الذين آمنوا بالله ورسوله ثم لم يرتابوا that the mu'minun they are only mu'minun if they have iman in Allah and his messenger ولم يرتابوا and there is no raib there is no doubt there is no hesitation so as Muslims there can never, never be any hesitation in our aqeedah there should never be any doubt in our Iman. Rather, it has to be Imanan, Sadiqan, Jaziman, Bil Yaqeen. Truthful Iman, a strong Aqeedah upon Yaqeen without any doubt and without any hesitation. So, when we say we're going to study Aqeedah, what does this mean? First of all, we have to understand that the sciences of Islam. And if you take all of the knowledge of Islam, we can divide Islam, all the Islamic sciences, into two areas. And that is Al Masail Al Amaliyah and Al Masail Al Ilmiyah. Al Masail Al Amaliyah and Al Masail Al Ilmiyah. So, Al Masail Al Amaliyah. Did somebody get the answer right? Did I give you the present? No, I forgot. Problem. Al Masail Al Amaliya are the practical based aspects of our religion. Now, what we call fiqh. What we call fiqh. So, fiqh, what is it the study of? It's the study of fiqh is the study of actions the action of salah the action of psalm the action of wudu and the rulings of those actions and the rulings of those actions that is fiqh so fiqh is al masail al amaliya and this is why if you open any book of fiqh the chapters of fiqh what are they fiqh al tahara ghusl wudu tayammum Salah, Janaza, Saum, Jihad, Nikah, Talaq, Buyu, buying and selling, giving loans. All of these are practical issues or practical based Masail. Naam? So that is Fiqh. And this is why when the ulama, when they define Fiqh, they say, Ilmun bil ahkam al sharia they say that fiqh it is the study of the shari ahkam relating to the practical based aspects of the sharia along with their evidences Naam. and when we say al ahkam al shari'iyah the shari based ahkam there are five ahkam of the sharia there are five ahkam of the sharia who knows the five ahkam of the sharia who knows the five ahkam of the sharia anybody before us and daim anybody else how from the boys of the madrasa or the maktab no haram wajib mustahab makru and Mubah, Ascent, and uh, you can have a present as well. There you go. <coughs> now, so if I if I ask you a question, if I say to you, what is the hukam? What is the Islamic hukum? What is the shari hukum of this and this? I want from you one of five words. That's it. Either you say to me, the shari hukum is wajib. Or it's mustahab, meaning nafal. Or it's makruh, meaning disliked. Or it's haram. Or it is mubah, meaning jaiz, halal. 
Naam. So these are the ahkam of the sharia and they relate to al-masail al-amaliyya which is fiqh. Then the other aspect of Islamic knowledge is al-masail al-ilmiyya. Al-masail al-ilmiyya. Which are the knowledge based aspects of our religion. And this is what we call aqeedah. So anything that we can say that this is the belief of a Muslim, this is uh, al aqida So for example, for example, what do we believe or who do we believe is the greatest, most virtuous Sahabi? The, who's the best companion of the Prophet ﷺ? The best, best companion. Abu Bakr as-Siddiq. Uh, Abu Bakr as Abu Bakr as-Siddiq. Now, us believing that Abu Bakr as-Siddiq is the best companion. Well done. Is this an issue of fiqh? Or is this a, a, an issue of aqidah? Aqidah. Naam. And the reason why I gave you the example of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu being the most virtuous companion is that one something for us to understand something that the difference between us and the Shia, the Rafida, is a difference of aqeed and iman. Don't think that the difference between us and the Shia is political or historical or social or geopolitical. It is an issue of iman and kufr, of aqeedah. The difference between us and the Shia has nothing to do with Saudi and Iran and Turkey and Qatar and this and that. No, it is only Aqidah and Iman. So Al-Muhim, Al-Masail al ilmiya this is what we mean by Aqidah. As for Al-Masail al amaliyya physical actions, that is Fiqh. Okay, uh, I want to do a, a small exercise. I want to go through the audience. And give me examples, specific examples of five masail which we would study in fiqh. And then give me examples of five masail which we would study in aqidah. Okay? So firstly, five masail which come under fiqh. And give me specific masail. Naam, put your hands up. Naam, there's no prizes for this by the way. <laughs> Naam. Uh, let's see. Some of the younger, take some of the younger boys first. From the, Naam? From the masjid? Anybody from the masjid? Go on. No, give me a mas'ala specifically. Specific mas'ala. Yeah. Um, um, if, um, يعني, if, you, if you pass the gas, you have to do wudu. Naam. For example, if I pass wind, is my wudu broken or not? That is something which is practical, something which is physical. Therefore, it is fiqh. Okay, give me another example, somebody else, not regarding wudu anymore, something now, something different. Naam. So, yeah. tfadr, tfadr. Uh, if, uh, if I could impure my passport. Is... Uh, Take an injection, for example. No, for, uh, if a person goes into janaba, now major impurity, then is my fast broken or not? That is something which is practical. Therefore, it is studied in fiqh. One more example. We've got three more to give. Go on. For example, you're sick and then you have to eat medicine and stuff, so you got to um, have to eat and like, have medicine. No. So if I'm fasting and I become sick, is my fast broken? That is mas'ala amaliya fiqhiya. Two more examples. Somebody give me a different example. So not fasting, uh, sorry, not psalm and not tahara, something else. Now who can give me another example of fiqh? Tawfiq? Uh, inheritance if there are no sisters involved. Naam. If a father passes away and he doesn't leave any daughters, for example, or he leaves X, Y, Z behind, how much do they get? Naam. This is mas'ala amaliya fiqhiya because it's something which is practical. One last example, somebody, no. Would, um, if, is eating lobster halal or haram, do you want? No. Is eating lobster or shellfish 
is it halal or haram? Naam, this is also anything regarding halal or haram. This is mas'ala amaliyya fiqhiyya. Okay, now let's do five masail which are masail ilmiya i'tiqadiyya, meaning masail regarding aqidah. So give me an example. Somebody's not answered so far. Naam, tafadhal. Naam. So what is your belief regarding where is Allah? When you say what is your belief, khas, this is now aqidah. Naam. Another example. The Quran was created or not? Naam. Was the Quran created or not? What is the significance of Prophet Muhammad in Islam? Our belief regarding Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Our belief regarding Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is also Mas'ala Ilmiya I'tiqadiya. Two more examples. Now right at the back. Say again. Naam, regarding the Day of Judgment. When is the day, the day of Judgment? How is the Day of Judgment? That is Mas'ala Ilmiya I'tiqadiya. And last one, Tfadl. When is Eid? Because we have different kinds of Eid now. No, that's now Fiqh. <laughs> that's Fiqh. Naam, that is Fiqh. Naam, Tfadl. Uh, uh, Naam, anything regarding the Akhirah and your belief of the Akhirah, that is a Mas'ala I'tiqadiya uh, Ilmiya. al -muhim. So now we understand the difference. First of all, we understand that the Islamic sciences are two main areas. Al-Masail al-Amaliyya, which we call Fiqh, and Al-Masail al-Ilmiyya, which we call Al-Aqeedah. All of the other sciences of Islam, they serve Aqeed and Fiqh. So Tafsir and Usul al-Tafsir and Hadith and Usul al-Hadith and Mustala al-Hadith and, and Usul al-Fiqh and Al-Qa'id al fiqhiya and al lugha and nahu al sarf all of these sciences, they all support either aqidah and fiqh. So in essence, aqidah is knowing who we worship and fiqh is knowing how we worship him. Aqidah is knowing who we worship and fiqh is knowing how to worship him. Uh, after this, if somebody said to you, Summarize the aqidah of a Muslim. Now when you say aqidah, summarize the aqidah of a Muslim. So how could we summarize the aqidah of a Muslim? How can we summarize the aqidah of a Muslim? And the answer is that the aqidah of a Muslim is summarized in the six pillars of Iman. Khalas. The aqidah of a Muslim, it is summarized in the six pillars of Iman. And then that which is connected to the six pillars of Iman and that which branches out from the six pillars of Iman. So if you know the six pillars of Iman, Arkanul Iman, then that is the Aqid of a Muslim summarized. Tayyib. The six pillars of Iman, who knows them in Arabic? The six pillars of Iman from the boys of the masjid first. Who knows the six pillars of Iman in Arabic? Father, stand up, stand up. What's your name? Salman Tafadl. Ahsant. To have Iman in Allah and His angels, His books, His messengers, the final day, and to have Iman in the decree of Allah. Salman Tafadl. And these are the six pillars of Iman. These six pillars of Iman, Ayyul Ikhwa, every single one of us should memorize them and we should be able to say them like Salman said it. And anybody who's like my generation or older than my generation, when we were young, every single child knew the six pillars of Iman. Anybody who's my generation or older in the masjid, at homes, every, if you said to any child, Arkanul Iman, straight away, Al Imanu Billahi wa Malaikatihi wa Kutubihi wa Rusulihi wa Liyom Al Akhir wa Al Imanu Bil Qadrihi wa Khaydihi wa Sharri. Why? Because this is the aqeedah of a Muslim. This is the belief of a Muslim. Yeah, we'll come to that, inshallah. We'll come to that. Naam. So, these are, this is the basic aqeedah of a Muslim. The reason why this is important is if a non-Muslim approaches you on the street and this non-Muslim says to you, explain to me your belief. You're a Muslim. I'm interested in Islam. 
explain to me your aqidah, your belief. If you hesitate, if you don't know what to say, that person is not going to accept Islam. <laughs> the person will say that you yourself don't know your aqidah. This basic question I'm asking you, and you're hesitating in how to answer me, you don't know how to answer me, and you want me to accept Islam? So instead of you being the door which opens Islam for this person, you will be the door which has kept that person away from Islam. And this is why every single one of us has to know the six pillars of Iman, and we can say them off the top of our head in Arabic and English. Uh, one more from the young boys, the six pillars of Iman. Naam. Somebody else tell me the six pillars of Iman from the boys of the masjid. Sheikh, you choose one of the students. Huh? Ibrahim. Ibrahim, where's Ibrahim? Ibrahim, stand up, good boy. Even in English, no problem. If you know Arabic, say in Arabic. If not, then in English. Yalla. Believe in the books, yeah. all of the books. Yeah, Ibrahim, come. Ibrahim, I'm giving this to you on the condition they memorize the Arabic. Khalas? So next week's lesson, I'm going to listen to you the Arabic as well. That's the condition. Yeah, you have to memorize it like Salman. Al Imanu Billahi wa Malaikatihi wa Kutubihi wa Rusulihi wa Yom al Akhir wa Imanu Bil Qadri Khairihi wa Sharri. So we said that these, these six pillars they make up the aqidah of a Muslim. And then certain things which are connected to the six pillars of Iman. So for example, Al Imanu Bil Yom al Akhir is Iman of the final day, Yom al Qiyamah. There are things which are connected to Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Like what? What's connected to Yawm Al-Qiyamah? No. No. For example, Ru'yatul Mu'mineen Rabbahum Yawm Al-Qiyamah. The believers will see Allah on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. That is connected to Al-Imanu Bil Yawm Al-Akhir. So it is a masala of Al-Aqeedah. And what we believe regarding Jannah and Jahannam and the rewards of Jannah and the punishments of Jahannam, this is connected to Al-Imanu bil yawm al-akhir Hamza Al-Mizan Wal-Hawd Wal-Kawthar Wal-Sirat Wal-Qantara The scales on yawm al-Qiyamah All of that is connected to Al-Imanu bil yawm al-akhir Something else Before huh? Barzakh The life of the grave And the journey of the soul Like we studied in the previous lectures that is connected to al imanu bil yawm al akhir even though it is not al imanu bil yawm it's not in yawm al akhir but it's connected to al imanu bil yawm al akhir also tafadhal ahsant ashrat al sa'a the signs of yawm al qiyamah even before yawm al qiyamah occurs the signs of yawm al qiyamah the jal mahdi ya'juj ma'juj ad daba ad dukhan etc etc all of these matters are connected to Al Imanu Bil Yom Al Akhir, and therefore they become part of your aqidah. Naam. For example, Al Imanu Bil Rusul, Iman regarding the messengers. There are certain masail which are connected to Al Imanu Bil Rusul. For example, the miracles of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. These are connected to Al Imanu Bil Bil Rusul, so it is part of our aqidah. Our Iman regarding the Sahaba. They are not Rusul, they're not messengers, but it is connected to Al Imanu bil Rusul, and therefore it is part of our Aqeedah. And like this, anything which is connected to the six pillars of Iman also come, becomes part of our Aqeedah. So we understand Al Iman. If somebody says to you, summarize for me the Iman or the Aqeedah of a Muslim, what do you say? The six pillars of Iman. And what is connected to the six pillars of Iman? So, if a non-Muslim comes to you tomorrow and says to you, tell me what is your belief? You say, easy. We believe firstly in Allah, al-Imanu Billah. And you explain who Allah is. And you explain some of the names and the descriptions of Allah. Qul huwa Allahu ahad, Allahu samad, lam yalid, wa lam yulad, wa lam yakul lahu kufwan ahad. 
You explain this exclusive right of Allah to every type of ibadah. Then you say we also believe in angels and you explain who the angels are. We believe that Allah subhanahu wa sent revelation to the humans to teach us how to live. This is Al-Iman al Kutub. You say we believe in prophets and messengers who came from Allah to teach us the revelation. So you explain who Isa, Jesus, Ibrahim, Abraham, Musa, Moses, etc. And the last of them was Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You explain that we believe in the hereafter where there will be ultimate reward and punishment and there's Jannah and Jahannam and there's Hisab and Jaza accountability. You say we believe in the divine decree. Naam. So if you have memorized the six pillars of Iman and you understand even the basics of the six pillars of Iman, you have enough with you to easily give da'wah to any non-Muslim. If at home, if at home, if on the streets you, appro you approach a group of Muslims, if one day you're in the masjid and the khatib doesn't come and somebody says to you, Masha, you look like a practicing person, stand up and give the khutbah. Now, if you know nothing except that you have the six pillars of Iman in your, in your head, you can easily give a khutbah. Take two or three minutes explaining each pillar of Al-Iman and the khutbah is done, walhamdulillah. So it's very important for us to know the six pillars of Iman or Arkanul Iman. Everybody should memorize them and teach them to your children. Now, teach them to your children. So this is Iman. Then we come to the word Tawheed. What is Tawheed? What is the meaning of Tawheed? And what is the difference between Tawheed and Aqeedah? What is the difference between Tawheed and Aqeedah? So the word Tawheed, it comes from the Arabic verb Wahada Yuwahidu Tawheedan. Wahada Yuwahidu Tawheedan. And the meaning of Wahada Yuwahidu means to make something one. To unite something or to make something one, we say Wahada Yuwahidu Tawheedan. So, for example, we say Tawheedul Ummah. Tawheedul Ummah, the unity of the Ummah, meaning it should be one single Ummah without any differences. We say Tawheedul Kalima, that our word should be united. Our word, our Kalima, it should be united. Tawheedul Kalima. We say Tawheedul Saf. Our ranks as Muslims should be united. We should all be one single rank. We use the word Tawheed. Tawheed as-Saf. And Tawheed in, when we Islamically, when we say Tawheed, it means Ifradullahi bil ibadah to single out Allah in every aspect of ibadah. Meaning to make Allah one, as our only deity who we worship. This is the meaning of Tawheed. Ifradullahi bil ibadah. That nobody else is worshipped except this one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in the Quran, in the Quran, whenever Allah subhanahu wa refers to Tawheed, he uses the word ibadah. The word Tawheed is not found in the Quran. And this is because Ibadah is synonymous with Tawheed because without Tawheed, Ibadah is worthless. Any act of Ibadah which a person does without Tawheed, it is worthless. Like for example, let's say a person prays Salah, but he prays Salah without Wudu, without Tahara, intentionally. Is his Salah wor worth anything? It's worthless. If a person came and he faced the Qibla and he said Allahu Akbar and he did all of the actions of Salah and he recited beautifully but he did it without wudu. Do we call these actions Salah? We say no, this is not Salah. Why? Because there was no Tahara. So like this, Ibadah needs Tawheed. If a person made a, a hundred Hajj, a thousand Umrah, gave millions in charity, spent nights in Nafal, but does not have Tawheed, all of that is Haba' Manthura. It's like scattered dust, nothing, worthless. Naam? So 
in the Quran, the word ibadah is used to mean a tawheed. And the saying of Allah, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْإِنسَ وَالْجِنَّ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I do not create the jinn nor man except to worship me. Ibn Abbas said, لِيَعْبُدُونَ أَيْ لِيُوَحِّدُونَ لِيَعْبُدُونَ أَيْ لِيُوَحِّدُونَ That the meaning of ibadah, لِيَعْبُدُونَ meaning tawheed, يُوَحِّدُونَ so every time the word ibadah is mentioned in the Quran, its meaning is a tawheed. What's the opposite of tawheed, ayyul ikhwa? A shirk. Whenever Allah mentions the opposite of ibadah in the Quran, He mentions shirk. Wa'budullah wa la tushriku bihi shay'a. So this shows us that ibadah is synonymous with a tawheed. Because the opposite of tawheed is shirk. And whenever Allah mentions the opposite of ibadah, He mentions shirk. So this shows that ibad and tawheed, they mean exactly the same thing. Okay, what is the difference between tawheed and aqidah? These two words, aqidah, tawheed. What is the difference or do they mean, mean the same thing? Now, who knows? Who knows? Tafadhal. Is tawheed a part of aqidah? Carry on. It's a half an answer. Because um, aqidah is basically what everything we believe and we believe in tawheed. No. Can anybody give an even more precise answer? Aqidah is your belief. And then ibad, sorry, tawheed is the action upon belief. How you enact upon your belief through ibadah? According to your belief. Nearly, not completely. Not enough for a perfume. Both are unfortunately not enough for a perfume. Tafadhal. Aqidah linguistically is what you tie your heart to. It's like the, it's basically a contract of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. It's your main beliefs. And then okay. uh, and then um uh, uh, Tawheed is singing out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worship. In, uh, in three types of worship, Mububiya and Ulumiya and Asma wa Sifat. Still not complete answer. <laughs> Still not complete answer. It's easier. The answer is easier than everything which you've said. I think you're thinking on a very deep level, mashallah. No, Tawheed is part of Aqidah. Aqidah is broad. And Tawheed is within Aqidah. Tawheed is specific to belief in Allah. Uh, Naam, that's the answer. Jazakallah <laughs> um, the, the answer is that Aqidah is six pillars of Iman. We said, Al-Imanu Billahi wa Malaikatihi wa Kutubihi wa Rusulihi wa Al-Yawm Al-Akhir wa Al-Qadri Khayri wa Sharri. Tawheed is Al-Imanu Billah. So Aqidah is the six pillars of Iman and everything connected to the six pillars of Iman. Tawheed is the first pillar of Iman, meaning Al-Imanu Billah. So Al-Imanu Billah, this is Tawheed. And Aqidah is Al-Imanu Billah, I Tawheed, and everything else. Naam. What is the difference? So if we understand this, what is the difference between Kufr and Shirk? What is the difference between Kufr and Shirk? Having understood this, that Aqidah is six pillars, and Tawheed is the first pillar, meaning Al-Imanu Billah. What is the difference between the word Kufr and Shirk? Yusuf? So kufr is, is wide. Shirk is, a, a shirk is obviously within Kufr. No. Kufr can also be done in ways that isn't Shirk as well. Uh, ahsant. Shirk is one type of Kufr. Just like Tawheed is one pillar of Aqeedah, because Aqeedah is more comprehensive, then Shirk is one type of Kufr. Because Shirk, it is the opposite of Tawheed. Kufr is the opposite of Al-Aqidah. For example, if a person, na'udhu billah, if a person insults the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa na'udhu billah, if a person insults the Nabi sallallahu this is Kufr. But it's not Shirk. Because he did not go against the Tawheed of Allah in terms of Ibadah, but it is still Kufr. If a person mocks something from Islam, if a person mocks and he makes a joke of Islam, this is kufr. But it's not called shirk. Because shirk is opposing the tawheed of Allah specifically. As for, uh, we said, mocking and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or joking about the sharia, then this is types of kufr. Naam? So this is kufr. The ulama give an example. For example, na'udhu billah, if somebody, billah, if somebody kicks the Quran intentionally, this is kufr. But it's not called shirk. So shirk is one type of kufr and there are many, many different types of 
الكفر and there are different levels of kufr etc طيب the last thing that we're going to end with the last thing that we're going to end with why is it important for us to study tawheed why is tawheed important why is why is the study of tawheed important why is tawheed important to every single muslim naam who knows naam you have to put your hands up though احسنت Because Tawheed is the fundamental condition of entering into Jannah. Meaning, Jannah was only created for the people of Tawheed. Jannah was created for the people of Tawheed. So without Tawheed, a person cannot enter into Jannah. Naam. Another reason why Tawheed is important. Some of the younger boys first. Naam. Twelve. Naam. Also, Tawheed is the fundamental condition of any type of ibadah. Every ibadah which you do, every righteous action which you do without Tawheed, it will not be accepted by Allah. وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ And they were not created except, and they were not ordered except to worship Allah مُخْلِس With ikhlas, with Tawheed. Now, another reason. Now, okay, why do you think Tawheed is important? That's why he said. Now, another, another reason. Now, people, brothers who haven't answered so far. Now, anybody who's not answered so far. Why is Tawheed important? Tafadl. Sorry? Well done. We were created for Tawheed. Allah Subhana created us for Tawheed. Like Allah said in the Quran. And I did not create jinn, no man can accept, to worship, meaning a tawheed. So Allah created us for tawheed. If we don't know tawheed, we don't study tawheed, we don't live upon tawheed, we have not fulfilled our purpose why Allah placed it upon the earth. Well done, Ahsan, excellent answer. The difference between a Muslim and a Kafir is tawheed. It begins with a tawheed. There are other differences. Like Salah, for example. But the fundamental difference between a Muslim and a Kafir is Iman, meaning a Tawheed. Did I give you one? Yeah. You got one? No. All messenger comes for this. Establish the Tawheed. For the Shaykh. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Because every single Prophet and Messenger came with the message of a Tawheed. وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهُ وَاجْتَنِبُ الطَّاغُوتِ We sent a messenger to every single nation telling their people to worship Allah upon Tawheed and stay away from a taghut the false deities. It's probably mentioned in the Quran or one of the hadith. Tawheed is the message of every single book, not only the Quran. Every single book, every single divine scripture, it came with the message of a Tawheed. It came with the message of a Tawheed. Ahsant. Naam. Tafadhan. Islam the the very meaning of Islam is al istislamu lillahi bi tawhid to submit to Allah upon a tawhid to submit to Allah upon tawhid just behind tamim behind it, yeah say it loud i can't hear you Now, any good which a person does, it is worthless without Tawheed. Come on, get there. Any good which a person does is worthless without a Tawheed. Tafadhal. Um, opening the doors for, uh, of Islam to someone. Now, excellent answer. How can you give da'wah to a non-Muslim if you yourself don't know Tawheed? And Tawheed is what enters a person into Islam. So we can only give da'wah to a person if we first know what Tawheed is. Now, any other answers? No, ahsant, well done. The shafa'ah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on Yawm al-Qiyamah, may Allah make us from those people who attain his shafa'ah, is only for the people of Tawheed. It is not for the people of shirk. He said, shafa'ati Yawm al-Qiyamah, لمن قال لا إله إلا الله خالصا من قلبه. The hadith of Abu Hurairah رضي الله عنه. My shafa'ah 
on Yawm al Qiyamah is for that person who said La ilaha illallah with sincerity in his heart, I at Tawheed. Because La ilaha illallah, Kalima to Tawheed. La ilaha illallah is the phrase of a Tawheed. Thing that Allah loves most, worshiping Him alone. No. Tawheed is the first obligation, the foremost obligation, the greatest obligation, and that which Allah loves the most. And shirk is the first haram and the most severe haram. And Allah subhanahu wa forgives every other action. Even if a person died and did not make tawbah, Allah will forgive, but shirk is not forgiven. Naam, any other reason why Tawheed is important? Yeah, it's our purpose to worship Allah and how can you worship him if you don't know the Tawheed or how to worship him with the Naam, as we said, Allah subhanahu wa created us for a purpose and that purpose is to worship Allah upon Tawheed. Jannah was only created for the people of Tawheed. <laughs> Jahannam was only created for those people who oppose Tawheed. Yawm al Qiyamah and the trumpets will only be blown for the sake of Tawheed. The prophets were sent for the sake of Tawheed. The angels were sent for the sake of a Tawheed. Uh, the prophets and the messengers were sent for the sake of a Tawheed. The books were real for the sake of a Tawheed. The Quran, all of it is regarding a Tawheed. Every single facade which we see upon the earth is because people have gone against Tawheed and obeying the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And every single salah rectification we see upon the earth is because people are following Tawheed and obeying the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The state of the Ummah, and all of us know the state of the Ummah, it is because a weakness of Tawheed, a weakness of Iman, and disobeying the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We're going to end, and I'm going to read to you a quote by Shaykh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah Rahimahullah regarding at Tawheed. He said, Man tadabbara Ahwal al alam that a person who thinks about the state of the world, a person who thinks about the state of the people. Wajada kulla salahin fil ard, he will find that every type of goodness, every type of benefit, every type of rectification upon the earth, fasababuhu tawhidullahi. وَعِبَادَتُهُ وَطَاعَةُ رَسُولِهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم. That its reason is the Tawheed of Allah, worshipping Him and following the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم. وَكُلَّ شَرٍ فِي الْعَالَمِ And every type of harm and evil upon the earth. وَفِتْنَةٍ وَبَلَاءٍ وَتَصْلِيطُ الْعُدُو And every type of fitna, every type of calamity, and the enemies of Islam gaining authority over the Muslims. He said, فَسَبَبُهُ مُخَالِفَةُ الرَّسُولُ وَالدَّعْوَةُ إِلَى غَيْرِ اللَّهِ Its cause is going against the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and calling others besides Allah. وَمَنْ تَدَبَّرَ هَذَا حَقَّ التَّدَبُّرُ And so whoever truly ponders over this, وَجَدَ هَذَا الْأَمْرِ كَذَلِكَ فِي خَاصَةِ نَفْسِهِ وَفِي غَيْرِهِ He will find this to be true in his own personal affairs and the affairs of those who are around him. As a Muslim, what you should think is the things which you go through, نعم, the harms or the losses that we go through, that it is due to our sins, and us disobeying the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and going against a Tawheed. And every type of goodness, every type of goodness is in the Tawheed of Allah and worshipping Allah and obeying the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is from Majmul Fatawa, volume number 15, page 25. Majmul Fatawa, volume number 15, page number 25. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for hidayah and tawfiq and that Allah subhanahu wa makes us people of tawheed and gives us a life upon tawheed and a death upon a tawheed. Uh, and inshallah in the next lesson, which is two Mondays from now, we'll begin reading the book and I'll bring some more copies. Wa jazakumullah khair.